So welcome to the second part of the first lecture in this course about wireless networking. So in this lecture, we, we are going to focus on the basics of wireless communication. So let's start by asking what are wireless radios? So the fundamental technology that enables wireless communication is a wireless radio. So radios are electronic devices that allow you to wirelessly transmit and receive various forms of information. This can include audio content, video content, or sensor readings in the case of IoT devices. Today, what we find is that almost all electronic devices have a radio that is built in. And in fact, some devices like smartphones have not only one, but multiple radios that are integrated in them. For example, one of these radios allows you to send your voice information over cellular frequency band while the other radio allows you to make a payment through technologies such as NFC. So essentially, radios are devices that take an information signal, such as an audio, video content, or sensor reading, and modulate the signal onto a higher frequency electromagnetic signal, which is then transmitted via an uh, antenna. So electromagnetic signals propagate over the air, and at the receiving end, the electromagnetic sig uh, uh, signal is captured by another antenna, demodulated and the original information is recovered at the reception at the receive, recept, receiving electronic device so to fully grasp the concept of radios and wireless communication it is important for us to familiarize ourselves with several key terms and concepts and these includes for example what are electromagnetic signals how are these electromagnetic signals modulated with an uh, information then how are these modulated electromagnetic signals radiated from the transmitter to a rec uh, receiver? How far can these electromagnetic si signals travel? And based on the different frequency, how are different wireless standards uh, 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 designed and how, how do we actually select these wireless standards for our application? And a comprehensive understanding of these concepts can give us a clear picture about uh, how wireless communication is achieved and how it is affected by different parameters in the environments. And we would try to understand these topics in this and the upcoming lecture. So let's start by looking at electromagnetic wave and electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic waves are a form of energy that can travel through space, including through vacuum without the need for any medium. And thus it is very different from uh, 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 waves such as sound, which requires a medium for its propagation. And electromagnetic waves are a very integral part of our lives. And they are form found in different forms such as light, uh, which allows us to see the world around us, or uh, X-rays, which can allow us to see within our body. Or even things like, for example, microwaves, which we use for heating our food, is an example of an electromagnetic wave. So how are these electromagnetic waves produced? So electromagnetic waves are produced by the synchronized oscillation between electric and magnetic field. And the frequency of the periodic change between the electric and magnetic field determines the property of the electromagnetic wave. You might also hear that uh, some people uh, characterize electromagnetic waves using wavelength. And there is a very simple inverse relationship between frequency and wavelength. And thus you can also say that the the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave determines its property. So one important uh, tool that can allow us to understand uh, the significance of the wavelength uh, uh, and uh, on electromagnetic waves property and its use for different application is something called electromagnetic spectrum. And it is a way for us to represent and characterize different electromagnetic waves based on its frequency or wavelength. So we show the electromagnetic spectrum on the right hand side in the slide. And we also show basically how the, uh, the wavelength of the electromagnetic waves correspond to some of the objects uh, uh, that we know about. For example, the, electro the wavelength of uh, radio waves could be as large as some of the tallest building that we have constructed. But for example, the wavelength of a gamma ray could be as small as an atomic nuclei. So while electromagnetic wave uh, uh, spans uh, the wavelength from uh, 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 from being very large to being as small as the nuclei of an atom, but the 
arguably one of the most significant parts of electromagnetic spectrum is what we refer to as radio waves. And most of the modern wireless communication relies on radio waves. And the reason why I say most is because there are also emerging technology, technologies that use other parts of electromagnetic spectrum for communication, such as using light, but it's it's uh, it's still a very niche area and we are going to briefly talk about communication using light in this course as well. But overwhelmingly, we are going to focus on communication using radio waves. So typically the frequency of the signal, uh, signals that make up radio waves range from 30 Hertz to 300 gigahertz. And different wireless technologies that we use in our day-to-day -day life operate at different frequencies within this range. We also show some of these electronic devices and technologies on the slide. For example, television transmissions happen at frequencies in hundreds of megahertz, while satellite communication and Wi-Fi occurs at frequencies of few gigahertz to tens of gigahertz. So how do we characterize these radio waves? So we can characterize these radio waves using three different important parameters. The first is what is the signal strength or power? And it refers to the amount of electro electromagnetic energy that is transmitted or received. The stronger the electromagnetic signal, the greater the distance over which it can communicate. And this is typically measured in unit of watts or milliwatts. The frequency or wavelength, this is the rate of oscillation between the electric and magnetic field. And it is measured in hertz. For radio waves, the typical frequency lies between, uh, as we mentioned, 30 hertz to 300 gigahertz. And the third parameter is, what is the modulation? This refers to how the information is encoded in the radio, in the electromagnetic wave or the radio wave. And different wireless technologies use different types of modulation to modify the properties of the radio waves to encode information. And by understanding these parameters, it is possible for us to analyze how the radio waves can be used by different wireless technologies for enabling different application scenarios. So let's talk about Internet of Things. Uh, so wireless devices cannot just operate on any part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And the reason is for wireless is a shared medium. And if you have two devices that are transmitting at the same frequency, they might cause interference and can negatively impact the communication. Therefore, specific frequency bands, uh, which are allowed for communication are also heavily regulated and often licenses can be required to operate in in uh, different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Some bands can use, are reserved for military purposes, some are used for FM radio transmissions, but there are certain bands that are available for unlicensed use. That means you don't need to take permission to communicate over these particular frequency bands. And these are also commonly used by Internet of, of Thing devices. On the slide, we show the frequency band at 2.4 gigahertz that is commonly used for communication uh, uh, for uh, for IoT devices, especially by standards such as Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And these days, five gigahertz is also used for uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, uh, and this is also part of the unlicensed band. In addition to unlicensed band, another emerging area of spectrum that can be used for wireless communication is the television spectrum. So many of the portions of the television spectrum are highly suitable for communication, uh, especially for IoT devices. And the reason is that they are much lower in fre frequency. And as we will see, that means that it has much better propagation characteristics. That means that you could transmit the signals over much longer uh, distances. And the thing with the te television spectrum is that there are parts of the spectrum that are not being used for television transmissions and they are unoccupied and these can be then used by IoT devices. And this is known as white space and is also being used in some IoT deployments. So once we have determined which part of the electro electromagnetic spectrum to use for communication, such as the uh, determining the frequency of radio waves, the next step is to figure out how to enco encode information into these radio waves. And this process is called actually modulation. So modulation is a process that involves taking an information signal such as an audio, video, or sensor data and using it, uh, using it to alter the property of a much higher frequency carrier radio wave signal. And the carrier signal determines the frequency or the part of the spectrum on which the communication occurs. 
and the result of the modulation uh, uh, process is a modified uh, signal that contains the original information but at much much higher frequency than the information signal so to modify the property of radio waves we can uh, utilize various different modulation techniques as previously discussed uh, the two critical parameters of radio waves uh, are its uh, signal strength and frequency and the common modulation techniques that uh, uh, modify one of these two parameters it, and they include things like amplitude modulation frequency modulation and phase modulation and these te techniques involve altering either the, car ca the carrier signals amplitude frequency or phase based on the information uh, that we want to transmit so these different modulation techniques exist because each of these techniques has its own advantage and disadvantage. For example, an amplitude modulated signal has a lower noise immunity than frequency modulation uh, 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 modulated signal, but frequency modulated signal require a much larger part of the spectrum for communication. So while these are like the basic techniques, but in addition to these techniques, there are also more complex uh, 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 modulation methods that use a combination of these basic techniques and they include things like quadrature amplitude modulation techniques or orthogonal frequency di uh, division multiplexing which is widely used in our wi-fi uh, uh, radios and th and these are much more advanced and uh, we are only briefly going to touch on the advanced modulation techniques but these are some things that you could actually cover in more advanced courses in uh, the in this area so while we have talked about these uh, modulation techniques, but they are they are mostly in the analog domain. But Internet of Things and the other electronic device primarily operate on digital information. Therefore, there are like variations of these modulation techniques that are tailored explicitly for digital baseband signals or digital information signals, which means sequence of bits. And these techniques are such as amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying, and phase sh shift keying, uh, which actually operate in a similar principle to the analog counterpart, but use discrete digital states to modify the property of the carrier signal. So for example, ASK is a method of uh, digital modulation where the amplitude of the carrier wave is, is modified based on the binary data. So you could modify the amplitude of the high frequency carrier signal based on two binary values, depending on the which bit you want to transmit. Similarly, a frequency shift keying actually uh, changes the frequency based on the the uh, uh, based on the particular bit that is being transmitted, and we have also PSK. And similar to analog modulation, uh, where we had more complex modulation schemes that were a combination of basics, we also have co complex digital modulation techniques. So these digital mod modulation techniques, uh, if we compare it to analog modulation, are much more efficient in terms of the power consumption, bandwidth utilization, and noise immunity. And that's why most of the modern communication actually uses uh, digital modulation techniques uh, uh, for, uh, for supporting wireless communication. And they're widely used in things like, for example, IoT devices, mobile networks, or satellite communication. So once we have modulated the elect uh, the electromagnetic signal, uh, once we have modified the radio uh, the radio waves with information, how do we radiate it and how do we convert it into electromagnetic energy? So once a carrier signal is modulated with information, it is transmitted through a device that is called an antenna. And we would have all seen antenna in our day to day life. For example, things like your Wi Fi router has an antenna built in. And actually, as we have talked about that the smartphones have multiple radios, they also usually have multiple antennas that are actually built in and opt uh, optimized for different frequencies. So an antenna is a device that converts electrical energy, such as a modulated carrier signal, into an electromagnetic energy for transmission. And it the antenna is also performs a uh, reverse task at the receiver device. And the design of the antenna depends very much on the operate, the frequency of the spectrum at which you are operating and for which application you want to actually design an antenna, uh, antenna. For example, an application where your device is very small or things like we talked about in the first lecture that your IoT devices can be even uh, like in a flexible sticker form factor. For these kind of devices, you need antenna to, uh, to be uh, in a form which is printed on the device on the uh, on on the sticker form factor substrate 
So how do we actually characterize antenna? Antenna can be characterized, one way to characterize antenna is based on the radiation pattern. And what is radiation pattern? It actually refers to the distribution of energy uh, the, from the antenna. So the two common radiation patterns for antennas are omnidirectional and directional. In an omnidirectional pattern, the antenna radiates uniform energy in, in all the direction. And, uh, and if you look at the in the in space, the the energy radiation pattern looks sort of like a donut as we show on the slide. On the other hand, a directional radiation pattern radiates much more energy in a specific direction when compared to the other direction. And it has an advantage that it can allow you to get much higher communication range. For example, some of the antennas on top of your house are actually, uh, for example, that are used for receiving television transmissions or for example, uh, the antennas that are used uh, in cellular base stations, they are actually highly directional antennas. While it is worth to noting that antenna design is extremely critical for wireless communication and the design of the antenna can significantly impact the performance. What, what does it mean? It can significantly impact how far you could uh, communicate uh, uh, with sufficiently good quality. And this is actually quite sort of like intuitive because for example, if you sort of like uh, even disorient the antenna of your Wi-Fi router, you would start to have issues where you might not be able to receive transmissions uh, uh, with, uh, or you might not be able to stream a video without buffering on your laptop because the link quality has deteriorated. So the design of the antenna is extremely important to support uh, good wireless communication. So antennas can come in very different uh, types. Uh, each has its own unique characteristics and use. And some common example of antennas includes things like dipole antenna. Uh, and then there is a variation of dipole antenna called halfway dipole. Uh, there are also other antennas, for example, things like Yagi antennas and patch antennas, which can be placed on uh, objects like, uh, for example, as I talked about sticker form factor uh, uh, sensors. Uh, and, and the specific choice of antenna actually depends on several factors, such as de device for form factor, the, uh, the specific application for which the antenna is being used, the wireless technology that you are using, and there are several other considerations. So when we select an antenna, it is, it's essential for us to consider the frequency of the uh, electromagnetic wave that is going to be radiated. As well as we need to look at, for example, if we require things like directional communication, because if we want to do directional communication, we might want to use antenna such as uh, an array antenna, like a Yagi antenna, because it, it allows you to have a very focused reception or transmission in a specific direction. Another example is, for example, a dipole antenna is simple and compact that is used in low power applications such as wireless devices. On the other hand, uh, Yagi antenna is used for very high power applications such as uh, television and radio broadcasting. And patch antennas are very common, for example, to find in devices like mobile phones and other portable devices because it has a form factor that allows you to have it extremely compact. But of course, there is a trade-off that when you make an antenna in the form of patch, its gain or its ability to sort of like receive signals uh, reduces. And that means that your range could be limited by having this patch antenna or you have to send a much stronger wireless signal. So with this, we come to end of the part two. In the next lecture, we are going to look into the propagation of uh, electromagnetic uh, signals. And also we are going to talk about uh, the different wireless standards and technology that exist uh, 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 depending upon the, their throughput frequency and other parameters. So thank you very much.